United States of America, and she is part of the world stand, one nation, under God, visible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Person? Here. Mr. Prince? Here. Ms. Breyer? Here. Mr. Pavoni? Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Coleman? Ms. Palmer? Here. Roll call, Mr. Mayor, one absent. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Taylor. I move that we excuse the absent council member. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Taylor, seconded by Ms. Palmer, that council excuse council member Corman. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, first item on the agenda is administrative report, Mr. Covington. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Mayor, Council, a couple of items. Um, I want to welcome uh, folks off to Farmer's Market tomorrow. It'll be Green Day at the market um, from 3 to 7 p.m. There'll be demonstrations and information from the King Conservation District, Seattle Tilt, Waste Management, Sustainable Renton, Shadow Habitat, Puget Sound Energy, and more. Green Day sponsor Yonker Nissan will have the 100% electric Nissan Leaf uh, on display for folks to look at. And TV and radio host Cisco Morris will be there for all your gardening needs and questions. Uh, we have uh, two uh, neighborhood picnics this week. The Vercello Homeowners Association will hold their annual picnic Wednesday in their HOA area located at Iwako Place Northeast between Northeast 7th and uh, Place and 7th Court. Cedar uh, River Area Neighborhood Associations, uh, so that's Maplewood, Maplewood Glen, Pioneer <coughs> Place, Summerfield, and Wonderland Estates will hold their picnic Thursday at Maplewood Park, located at 3400 Southeast 6th Street. So uh, as always, Renton residents are encouraged to bring their favorite potluck dish and attend the picnic to get to know their neighbors. The City of Renton's Community Services Department recently purchased two pieces of outdoor elliptical exercise equipment as part of the South King County Multi-City Initiative I can the I can which stands for community activity nutrition network that initiative is a collaborative effort to help reduce not only childhood but adult obesity city of Renton and Valley Medical along with eight local cities King County Public Health King County Parks businesses and organizations are leading the charge to help educate children and families about this chronic health issue and to provide and promote healthy activity opportunities and nutritional information Two elliptical machines were installed adjacent to the playground at Gene Coulon Memorial Beach Park to encourage our visitors to exercise. Easy way for parents to exercise and still be able to watch their children. Setting a good example of activity for your children is a great way to create and help keep healthy habits from youth through adulthood. It's also good because I think I've tried to play on the youth uh, play activity there and you get kicked off if you're <laughs> so it's good we got these adults. <clears throat> So we have additional plans for exercise equipment in other parks in the near future. And if folks are interested in learning more about the ICANN initiative, they can contact uh, www.valleymed.org slash ICANN. That is all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Next is audience comment. We have a couple people signed up to address the council. When I call your name, please come to the podium, give your name and city of residence for the record, and you have five minutes. Diane Dobson. <clears throat> Good evening, Diane Dobson, City of Brenton Residence. Last name is spelt D-O-B-S-O-N. Um, the definition of ironic is happening in the opposite way to what is expected and typically causing wry amusement because of this. I'm one of the few residents that lives in downtown Renton on the Cedar River, and I'm very fortunate to, get, to be able to call the only two block stretch of houses adjacent to the river my neighborhood. Unfortunately, this year I'm having to share that title with a number of other residents. Residents who share the same street of residence with me, but who have no house number to call their own. In 2012, I started actively <coughs> complaining to the city officials about the increasing issues with the homeless populations. Eventually, in August 2013, I had a sit down with city officials in the Renton Police Department. At that time, the city officials and Renton Police Department made promises. Chief Milosevic and the Renton Police Department upheld their promises. Living and working in downtown Renton affords me the unique opportunity to see and interact with the homeless populations on a very regular basis. I recognize their faces, I've heard many of their stories, and I have no problem affording a kind smile, conversation, food, or even cash at times to those people who are down on their luck. This year, the homeless population in Renton is rampant, and many of these faces are new faces, and many of these stories don't involve being down on their luck. 
What we're seeing is an influx of individuals who are simply choosing to not conform to society's standards. We're seeing individuals who can't go to shelters or encampments because they choose to drink and do drugs, and even shelters and encampments have rules. This plea has come into the city council three weeks after one homeless man bludgeoned another homeless man to death with a hammer. <clears throat> Even the city police officers have recognized the homeless camps as housing people who seem to be down on their luck. Their families living in tents and single individuals struggling to get by. These homeless people, these homeless individuals tend to mind their own business and appreciate it when they're left alone. Criminal activity is not a staple characteristic of these people. And these people aren't the people that are actively causing problems and adding to the demise of your downtown core. The crowds that are now coming into downtown Renton poignantly along the two-block stretch of residential housing along the Cedar River Trail don't seem to recognize the same fly-below-the-radar type of approach these other homeless individuals do. These individuals, some are homeless, some are not. They just choose to consort with the home in homeless individuals, are panhandling, breaking into residences, vehicles, <coughs> trespassing on private property, committing acts of voyeurism from the trees on the trail, harassing customers at businesses, confronting employees at businesses, gambling, selling drugs, making camps, urinating, defecating, throwing their trash and debris in the river, having sex in public. All these things are things I'm sure you don't want in your neighborhoods. As a citizen, I've made repeated reports. I've called the police on a regular basis. Our responses from police officers have ranged from, we're sorry, but there's nothing we can do for you, to, if you don't like what's going on, why don't you move? I'm a pioneer family from the city of Renton that's been in the city of Renton for one and over 100 years, and I'd like to ask you as council members how you would take a police officer telling you, if you don't like what's going on, move. It doesn't resonate very well with me as a citizen. The Cedar River runs over 45 miles. That's the Cedar mm -hmm. River Trail extends 4.5 miles along that river from Lake Washington to Jones Road. Of that 4.5 mile stretch of trail, the trail which is considered part of the city of Renton Parks and Trails, only two blocks of that trail extends through the residential area of downtown Renton. Only two blocks. Encourage your bicycle, riding, or your bicycle officers to make regular trips down the trail. Don't just pass over the trail when they're riding from the landing to City Hall, which we see them often do. Have your patrol officers make regular sweeps. And instead of making the people just pour out their alcohol to come back tomorrow with alcohol, cite them for drinking in public, just like you would do to me. Instead of encouraging the other homeless people to clean up the heroines from the heroin <clears throat> or the needles from the heroin that they're cooking, and encouraging these homeless people that are under the influence to go to another location, arrest them. If I was doing heroin on the street, I would expect you to arrest me too. Make this half mile stretch of 4.5 miles of trail property less inviting for the homeless people to come and commit their crimes. Maybe if you made it less comfortable, they'd be less likely to come back. And now the irony, and here I am, I don't find this ironic at all. On April 7th, the city government passed an ordinance, ordinance number 5708. Do you council members know what ordinance number 5708 was? Ordinance number 5708 was accepting a, a million dollar piece <clears throat> of property to be named the Kenyon Dobson Park, to be maintained by the city of Renton as a park for the trailheads at Cougar Mountain. The irony that I don't find amusing at all is here I am, a Dobson, that lives adjacent to the trail that you're responsible for currently maintaining, begging and pleading you to do something about that two two block stretch of trail. You accepted a million dollar bequest to be incorporated as part of your parks. Please ensure the public safety of the two block stretch of trail system. That's the only stretch that runs through the residential neighborhoods. Thanks for coming down, Diane. <clears throat> the thing I can tell you tonight is that I've asked for a meeting with the police chief and our community services department, and we definitely will get back to you. I what appreciate. type of action we're going to take. And, and, and as a note, I know it's not meant for, for discussion. In August 2013, we met with the Community Services Department, um, Ed Prince, uh, Rich Swicker, and Chief Milosevic. At that time, we were told by the city that signage would be looked at 
at the entrances of the trails to discourage people from entering the trails after dusk. That has not been done. As well, I was assured, continually assured, that the lights are on the trail 24 hours. Those lights are not on the trail 24 hours. Okay, we'll check into those and definitely get back with you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, next is Audrey Adams. Hi, <clears throat> my name's Audrey Adams, uh, Renton resident, and I apologize for not coming back two weeks ago. I got sick. Um, uh, three weeks ago, I gave an analogy of um, all of you, you know, in my theoretic world, had the same. Uh, we're diagnosed with the same condition, we're given the, the same prescription, but you all had different um, uh, ways of dealing with that particular um, medical condition, and you had different reactions to the drugs, and you had different <coughs> dosage needs, etc. In other words, the point is, is that one size does not feel, fit all. It doesn't fit all when you're trying to fit in <laughs> to a moo any more than it does um, for drugs. It absolutely does not, one size does not fit all for drugs. Um, so, but I also understand that um, you're in a difficult position with fluoride because there's um, people in the community that primarily they're professionals that are trying to tell the people what they're supposed to have, but there are people in the community that want fluoride. So I actually got this idea from a water commissioner uh, in another state, um, said great, take that money uh, and I think it was uh, here, it's about $80,000, um, correct me if I'm wrong, um, that it costs to run the program and to buy the um, sodium fluoride. But take that money and actually buy pharmaceutical grade fluoride tablets to be distributed free um, to whoever wants them. And then uh, in that case, the, the parent or individuals can actually um, confer with their dentist or doctor because um, and actually, in, in reality, it would probably have to go through a prescription process mm. because you can't get luride, which is the fluoride tablets, um, without a prescription. And um, you probably, uh, well, it's rather interesting that the same amount of fluoride can be added to water supply with no prescription, and yet, and that's an industrial grade, and it says right on the package, the 50 pound sodium fluoride bag that you buy from China. Um, whereas a pharmaceutical grade tablet that you can control the dose um, and the individual, whether or not it's appropriate for that individual, that's by prescription only. Industrial grade, no prescription, goes in water. <clears throat> pharmaceutical grade, get to talk to your doctor or dentist, individualized, that's all by prescription. Okay. Just saying. But anyway, so here's my idea. Um, in addition, I think that there, <laughs> okay, so $80,000 will tr buy a whole lot of, of luride, which is the um, pharmaceutical fluoride tablets. I don't think you're going to have that many people coming down here to get them. But um, you could spend all the $80,000 on the first year and then save them over for the next number of years because you won't get rid of them. But let's say, um, that you use that money not just for uh, the luride uh, pharmaceutical grade um, tablets, but also maybe toothbrushes and toothpaste for um, those who don't have the money to buy them. Why, do, why don't we use, and, and of course, now $10,000 even is going to buy a lot of, of dental um, products. Um, what about a part time staff person? I mean, you can take. Uh, $30,000 by a part-time staff person, they oversee the program, they hand out, um, you know, the, the uh, dental products like the toothpaste, tooth, toothbrush, and if you find a way to um, distribute the pharmaceutical grade fluoride tablets, awesome. But in addition, and I think this is really key, is to use the remainder of that $80,000 that you saved to um, go into the schools. Have that person go into the tool, uh, schools and help educate children about, um, you know, how to brush, how often to brush. Um, don't swallow that toothpaste, of course, or you have to call poison control. But um, but education is key. 
And I think that's one of the biggest reasons that our low-income population has a problem with um, tooth decay, that and, of course, the issue that they cannot get dental care. So if there's anything left over, wonderful, have them get actual dental care with the dentist, which they desperately need. So um, it's a reallocation, and it's much more um, targeted, affected for those who you actually want to help, and I know you do want to help. So that's my thoughts. And uh, I hope you take them seriously because I'm not jesting at all. I think that this is an extremely appropriate way to use uh, $80,000. But thank you so much. Thank you. Next is consent agenda. I have nine items for council consideration. Are there any items a council member would like pulled for discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Mayor, I <coughs> move the consent agenda to be approved as the DOPS as presented. Second. Been moved by Mr. Person, seconded by Mr. Prince. The council approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Going on to unfinished business, Mr. Person. No unfinished business. Okay, Mr. Prince. No unfinished business. Okay, Ms. Breyer. Uh, yes, the Finance Committee has a report. Okay, Finance Committee Committee report. Site lease agreement and mem memorandum of lease with Verizon Wireless for a cellular site at the Rolling Hills Reservoir. The Finance Committee recommends concurrence with the staff recommendation to approve a five-year le site lease agreement and a memorandum of lease with Verizon Wireless LLC in the amount of $2,500 per month to locate antennae and on and near the Rolling Hills Reservoir. The committee further recommends that the mayor and city clerk be authorized to execute the agreements. This is signed by the committee chair and members. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Ms. Breyer. Move the council concur with the Finance Committee report. Second. Been moved by Ms. Breyer, second by Ms. Palmer, that council concur with the Finance Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, Mr. Pavoni. Yes, Mr. Mayor, the Utility Committee has a report. The Utilities Committee Committee report. Sewer Radio Panel Relocation and Lift Station Improvements uh, Bid Award. The Utilities Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to accept the low bid submitted by Equity Builders LLC in the amount of $145,799.25 for the sewer radio panel relocation and lift station improvements project. The committee also recommends that the mayor and city clerk be authorized to execute the construction contract. The committee further recommends approval of a budget adjustment in the amount of $30,000 from the 2014 sewer replacement rehabilitation project account to the Mill Avenue South Manhole Rehabilitation Project account. The budget adjustment associated with this project will be included in the next budget adjustment ordinance. This is signed by the committee chair and uh, one, the vice chair. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Pavoni. I move that the council concur with the utility committee report. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Pavoni, seconded by Mr. Prince. The council concur with the utilities committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Taylor. Yes, uh, Community Services does have a committee report, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Community Services Committee Report. And a local agreement with King County for Community Development Block Grants. The Community Services Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to approve the 2015-2017 Joint Interlocal Agreement with King County for Community Development Block Grant for the Community Development Block Grant Program. The committee further recommends that the resolution regarding this matter be presented for reading and adoption. This is signed by the committee chair and member. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, this is a, I'm really intrigued about this uh, interlocal agreement and I do uh, move that uh, council concur with the uh, committee report. But prior to the uh, vote on that, I just want to say that one of the uh, interesting things that will come of this will be some reallocation of some of the funding that will allow us to engage in some community uh, uh, economic development. And uh, I am waiting anxiously to see what some of those programs are going to look like because we certainly can use them with that. I move to council concur with the uh, community development uh, committee report. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Taylor, seconded by Mr. Pavoni, that council concur with the Community Services Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? You guys have it. Uh, let's see, Ms. Palmer. Yes, Transportation Committee has one committee report. Okay, Transportation and Aviation Committee. The amendment number five to the Boeing Company lease. 
the Transportation Aviation Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to approve the termination of Boeing Substation B-1 from the leased area under the Boeing Company lease LAG-10-001, resulting in an annual rate decrease of $298.98. The committee further recommends that the mayor and city clerk be authorized to sign the lease amendment. This is signed by the committee chair and vice chair. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Ms. Palmer. I move that council concur <clears throat> with the committee report. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Palmer, second by Mr. Pavoni, that council concur with the transportation committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That's it. Thank you. Moving on to resolutions and ordinances. We have three, re three resolutions and one ordinance for first reading. Okay, the first resolution is regarding a 2014 emergency management performance grant. Resolution of the City of Renton, Washington, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to accept an emergency management performance grant from the State of Washington Emergency Management Division. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Taylor. I move that this resolution be adopted as read. Second. Been moved by Mr. Taylor, second by Ms. Palmer, that this resolution be adopted as read. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. And the next resolution is regarding a temporary closure of Northeast 31st Street. Resolution of the City of Renton, Washington, authorizing and ratifying the temporary total closure of Northeast 31st Street from 2100 Northeast 31st Street to 2230 Northeast 31st Street. Mr. Mayor? Yes. I move that uh, the resolution be adopted as read. Second. Been moved by Ms. Palmer, second by Mr. Person that this resolution be adopted as read. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, the final resolution is regarding the Community Development Block Grant Program. Resolution of the City of Renton, Washington, authorizing the Mayor and City Clerk to enter the City of Renton into an interlocal agreement with King County entitled the Joint Interlocal Agreement regarding the Community Development Block Grant Program. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Taylor. I move the Council to adopt the resolution as read. Second. Been moved by Mr. Taylor, seconded by Mr. Pavoni, that council adopt this resolution. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, and the ordinance for first reading is regarding the Alpine Nursery Annexation. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, annexing approximately 17.1 acres, of which the northern and a portion of the eastern boundaries are coterminous with existing city limits. The area is bordered to the south by parcel lines located near Southeast 146th Place by 161st Avenue Southeast and parcel lines to the east, parcel lines in proximity to Southeast 142nd Place to the north and by 160th Avenue Southeast to the west. This is the Alpine Nursery Annexation. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Prince. I move the ordinance be advanced to second and final reading at the next council meeting. Second. Been moved by Mr. Prince, seconded by Ms. Breyer, that this ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Jason. Moving on to new business, Mr. Person. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have one item to announce, and that's the Committee of the Whole scheduled for 6 p.m. on July 14th. That's next Monday in the council chambers. Uh, it's going to be regional issues and updates. Yeah, one of the updates I want to be, uh, pull out for the council and the public is that we're going to get a briefing on the transportation improvement plan for uh, proposed downtown projects. I think it's time we, we have a briefing on, on that. And I would ask any council member if you have any questions about what's going on on a particular project downtown, if you'd let me know within the next couple days and then we'll try and get that fit in as well. That's it, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Mr. Prince? Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, a couple of things. Uh, the Planning Development Committee for July 10th has been canceled. I also want to give um, a couple of kudos to A, Sonny Mainlander and the staff for an excellent 4th of July celebration uh, down at Jean Kuan Park, uh, fabulously done. Um, and then to the Piazza Renton Group and all the folks who helped and worked on the car show yesterday. Perfect day for car show, had over 400 cars, tons of people. So good weekend for events in Aaron Renton. Thank you, Mr. Prince. Ms. Breyer. I uh, have to, um, not this coming Monday the 10th, but the July 14th 
Monday at 5 p.m. We have a finance committee with three um, items, vouchers, the Riverview Park Bridge Demolition Project contract with Imperial Demolition, and then emerging issues in revenue streams. Okay, thank you. Mr. Pavoni. No new business, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Mr. Taylor. No new business, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Ms. Palmer. Yes, the Transportation Committee will meet this Thursday, July 10th at 4 o'clock in the Council Conference Room. Three items on the agenda. The 2015 to 2020 six-year transportation improvement plan and arterial street plan update. Second item is the Sound Transit Long Range Plan SEIS comment letter. And third item is emerging issues in transportation. Okay. And that's it. Thank you. Next is audience comment. Was there anybody that wanted to address the council? Different topic. <laughs> totally different topic. Audrey Adams again. Um, I. Uh, <laughs> I got pulled into a little volunteer project by our dear friend over here. <laughs> anyway, um, and we need more volunteers. The, the REACH program does um, make sandwiches uh, and lunches and snacks for the homeless. And we do it downstairs at the Center of Hope um, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I'm hoping that there are some people out there who are listening tonight that might be able to have um, spare an hour and a half on Monday, Wednesday, or Fridays um, to help make these lunches because we're very, very short on volunteers. It is not exclusive to women because we had a gentleman join us recently. He's a retiree from Boeing, and I'll tell you, that guy makes a mean sandwich. <laughs> He's fast, too. He's absolutely been a uh, joy to work with. Um, but if, if anybody's listening who can help um, volunteer, please contact Maggie Breen. Just think Maggie um, at... Um, She's at the Salvation Army. You can reach her at 425-238-7915. Um, and uh, that's, again, 425-238-7915. It's a great thing to be doing. We have a good time, um, but we just need a few more folks. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you, Audrey. Thanks for the volunteers, too. That is a great program. So wish of the council? Move we adjourn. Second. Moved by Mr. Person, second by Mr. Prince. So we adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned.